Hey there, Sam here from Pitter Potter Mobile. I want to show you guys a mug that I'm painting this morning, but I was just in the backyard picking some broccoli and I came across this garden steak that the girls made a couple of years ago. Isn't it funny? And then in the background there, you can see a plaque that they made that same year. It's still my favorite thing in the backyard. These are a couple more garden steaks that we have for some vegetables that are just a little bit out of season right now, but they'll go back in the ground just as soon as it's time. So let's go inside and take a look at that mug. So a little backstory on this mug. It was originally intended to be a Christmas present for our family this year, but just like the cobbler's daughter, our family is the last to get their pottery. Um, I've had a really fun time working on it, but it has been technically um, complicated in spots given that I'm trying to um, at least reasonably match a likeness of my children onto the mug. Um, it is not necessarily the most ambitious project I've ever done, but it's certainly up there. Um, a couple of things that I just want to show you about making um, any kind of fun painting. The first is never just use one color to paint anything, always take at least two shades, even if you just add white to your original color. Always make sure you use multiple shades. In this case, I'm using uh, Bluebeard and Caribbean Blue to do my younger daughter's shirt. What that's going to create is a brightness in spots, so it will look like the light is shining on her. Um, and I've got a couple of colors in her hair, that's Pinka Dot and Pinky Swear. Her eyes are two shades of brown. That's uh, Java Bean and Camelback. You always want to use multiple shades just to make it look that much more real. And then you'll see, um, too, I love to put those white reflections in the eyes. I think that just kind of wakes them up. And here I'm adding the second coat of Pinky Swear and Pinka Dot to the hair. What I've already done is I laid down the pinky square where I wanted the hair to be darker. And then I painted pink a dot, which is the lighter shade over the top of everything. Um, I let all that dry and now I'm doing it again. Pinky square where I want it to be darker and then I'll go over it everywhere with pink a dot one more time. What that does is it essentially gives you four layers of color to look through so that you get this really beautiful depth of color. The sun is peeking through the window there. It's making everything shine yellow, but you can basically see how, it, how it's come out there. And now I am going to add just some bright bursts of color around both girls' images. I've got some yellow about it yellow. I have jaded green. I've got sea breeze blue and grapele purple, and it looks like some sour apple green in there too. I just want to make this since it's not going to be a Christmas mug, clearly, I just want to make this a beautiful springtime mug with some bright, pretty colors. So when I get this mug finished and it is out of the kiln, I will make another video um, to show you how all these colors pop after they bake. Sometimes it's kind of difficult to tell, especially, you know, their faces, they have vanilla dip and cashew later on there and they can basically dry to about the same color. So I'm, I'm going to show you in a separate video here in a few days what these colors pop to. And here on the bottom, I've just signed it the year we quarantine 2020 um, and kind of pretend 
like I got this done by Christmas last year. Um, Because in five years, who will remember anyway, right? Thank you for watching.